Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds. There's been a lot of discussion in the press in the last week about Tokyo Electric changing their estimate for the amount of radiation that was released at Fukushima. And there's also been a lot of discussion about radioactive hot particles being discovered all over Japan. Well, I wanted to tie those two together today and talk about just what that means. First, Tokyo Electric recalculated the amount of radiation that came out of Fukushima in the first week. And they discovered that that first week released twice as much radiation as they had thought was released in the entire accident. So it released an enormous amount more than they, they, than they anticipated. But the second piece of that is that most of these new numbers, most of these new radiation particles were hot particles. And here's why. Right after a nuclear fuel melts, it releases all of its gases. And those gases are called xenon and krypton. They're noble gases, they don't react. And they surround the population and bombard the population with gamma rays. Now that part of the calculation is pretty straightforward. That part doesn't change with this new estimate from, from uh, Tokyo Electric. So the xenon and krypton part of the estimate is there. But what's changed is they've realized that an enormous amount more hot particles were released. Now even then, this is an assumption. Remember, all of the radiation detectors were blown to smithereens. And still they're assuming that about 98% of the radiation is still inside that reactor. But this new radiation is in the form of hot particles. What are they? Cesium, strontium, plutonium, uranium, cobalt-60, and many, many others. Now, when you go outside and you're in a cloud of noble gases, you can pick it up with a radiation detector because you're bombarded by gamma rays. But when you're in hot particles, unless there are many, 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 it's very difficult to detect a single hot particle. But that doesn't mean it's not dangerous. We're discovering by scientists, independent scientists, using air filters in Japan, that the average person in Tokyo breathed in about 10 of these hot particles every day all the way through the month of April. Those same scientists using air filters are discovering that in Fukushima, people were probably breathing in 30 or 40 times more radiation than they were in Tokyo. <clears throat> Again, in the form of a hot particle. And what surprised me was that the air filters in, um, in Seattle indicate that people there were absorbing five hot particles every day for the month of April. Now, what does that mean? That means that that hot particle gets absorbed in your lung, or it winds up in your intestines, or it winds up in your muscle, or it winds up in your bone. Now, it constantly bombards a very narrow piece of tissue. Now, we have here a, a picture of a, of a lung from an ape, and that, there's a hot particle in the lung. And you can see how localized the damage is from that, from that hot particle constantly bombarding the ape's lung. Now, a constant irritant like that, your body fights. And most of the time, your body wins. Sometimes, however, those hot particles can cause a cancer, and, and of course, that's a grave concern. Now, you can't run a Geiger counter over someone's lung on the outside to determine if they have a hot particle because those particles, those rays, don't travel outside the body. They do their damage to the local tissue. But we know they're there because the air filter results indicate that they are. Since I was about 16 years old, I used to work on cars a lot. And I know that if I was working on a car in Japan right now, I would be using gloves and a respirator if I was removing the air filter in a car. Because I know that there's radiation on those air filters. That's what the independent scientists are telling us. The last thing I'd like to talk about tonight is that there have been reports coming out of Japan of individuals tasting a metallic taste. Now, this is not the first time that that metallic taste has been detected after a nuclear accident. People near Three Mile Island detected a metallic taste in their mouth. People near Chernobyl detected a metallic taste in their mouth. 
and also patients undergoing radiation therapy for, for cancers also have detected a metallic taste in their mouth. This is anecdotal. It's very difficult to measure, but that we are seeing it in Japan confirms what has already been detected at Three Mile Island and at Chernobyl. Well, that's about it for tonight. Next week, on Thursday, June 16th, I'll be at the Boston Public Library between 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock at night. The topic is Fukushima. Can it happen here in the United States? I'll be with David Lockbaum from the Union of Concerned Scientists and Dr. Richard Clapp, an epidemiologist. If you're in the Massachusetts area, it'd be nice to meet you there. Thank you, and I'll keep in touch.